Next is Anna Leffler with The Baby Maker. Raise this a little bit. We cut here, 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 and here, the doctor said, slicing his finger across the illustration, a relentlessly full-color rendering of the human reproductive system, female. The picture sprawled over two pages of the book he had pulled from his office shelf and laid open in front of me. It probably wasn't called the big pop-up book of uteruses, but that's how I remember it. For months, my body had been sending me signals that something wasn't right. In keeping with my lifelong practice in these matters, I ignored them. <laughs> this strategy had worked just fine until earlier that day, after dressing to take our daughter to orientation for her new school, I stood up and hemorrhaged. And so here I was in my OBGYN's office after a harried crosstown drive, perched on a beach towel and a maxi pad the size of a futon. <laughs> I was whisked into an exam room where the ultrasound machine sat humming, a tube of lubricant at its side. At the table, the stirrups were empty, ready for the next cowgirl. There's your problem, my doctor said, eyes on the ultrasounds monitor, as he gently shifted the condom-clad probe inside me. I craned my neck around and saw him making, sorry, saw him marking something in the cloudy gray field with little electronic plus signs. I squinted at the image on the screen, trying to make out the shape that he saw so clearly. I wanted to see it, to understand what had appeared inside my body. But honestly, the grainy image looked like a blow-up of a Cold War-era spy satellite photo. Apparently, those pesky Cubans were hiding their missiles in my womb. <laughs> my doctor started taking measurements on the screen, glowing dashed lines that crisscrossed the mysterious expanse. I remembered those lines. They'd been drawn across the tiny beginnings of our two children. My husband and I had watched in wonder each time, holding hands and marveling at their heartbeats, fluttering away in that gray-blue field of electrons. That had been over a decade ago. My uterus hadn't been on TV since. <laughs> the only thing we take is the baby maker, the doctor said, tapping the illustration in the book. Everything else stays. The baby maker, I echoed, and studied the picture. I tried to imagine the new me, leaner, meaner, uterus-free, <laughs> my ovaries flying around unfettered inside me like jump rope handles. <laughs> but the hormones stay the same, I asked. Yep, he said and shut the book. You still have all that, the mood swings, the irritability. Thank God, I thought. <laughs> I wasn't ready to give that up. <laughs> Driving home, I tried to process all that had happened in the past few hours. For the first time in my life, a part of my body was failing and would be removed, ret retired from service forever. I pictured my uterus as an aging veteran sitting in the corner booth at Denny's, <laughs> wearing one of those little VFW hats and ordering from the senior menu. <laughs> After decades of quiet service, it had been called up and done two tours. <laughs> it had seen action at the front and performed heroically. At least it was heroic to the four of us. I felt a surge of tenderness for this little organ inside me that had given us so much, had literally created our family. I knew how fortunate I was to have conceived, to have had normal pregnancies. I also knew how devastating the doctor's news could have been. I was losing a part of my body, but what remained was healthy and safe. I had not received bad news that day, but rather further evidence of my lifelong good fortune. My cell phone rang as I drove down Wilshire Boulevard into the afternoon sun. Are you all right, my husband asked. Yes. How are you feeling? My reply was simple and true, grateful. <laughs>